Hello again, I am Blunty. So, CES 2019. See, I said, that? I said 2019 without even thinking about it then. Well, we're, we're 10 days into 2019. I already am not accidentally saying 2018. Hooray me, by the way. This this chair and this, this new background, I, I think I have to replace the old DX Racer. What do you think? It is starting to show a bit of wear and tear on the old uh, seat panel, if you know what I mean. I'll show you a picture, but it's kind of embarrassing. All the... All, the, all this is just sort of chipping away because I sit on it so often. Anyway, CS going on. Definitely need a new chair for this background though. Doesn't that look right? I need something with a with a, like a low back, like a mesh low back, something unassuming, so you're not distracted by this sitting in front of that. It's 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 incompatible. I don't like CS 2019. That's right. That's that's fine. Loud motorcycle. You go by right now. You're not interrupting anything at all. Thank you for that. Oh, it's a garbage truck as well. We'll wait for that. You know what? Screw the background noise. It's it's hot this time of year. It's it's not even nine a.m. yet, and it's like twenty bajillion degrees in Sydney, and I just I don't, I don't like it. How hot is it? I don't know. It's like it's only twenty-two degrees, but it's very humid. I had my windows shut last night because I don't remember why I shut my windows. So trying desperately to stay on track. And failing. CES 2018. No, I did I did it wrong. I knew I shouldn't have got cocky about it. CES 2019 is going on right now. I like how this, this video is going so far, don't you? I'll eventually get to the point, I'm sure. You clicked on it because it said something about the new AMD graphics cards in the title, I'm sure. But how far are we into the video and haven't even mentioned them yet? We'll get there eventually, I promise. So... I'm not really covering CS. Obviously, I'm not there. Um, I've only been once, a few years back. Went with Sony. It was very fun. Never been invited back since, though. Nobody wants to spend the money on me to go to CES, I guess. So I didn't really plan on doing any CES coverage, is the point I'm trying to drive at here. But there have been a few interesting announcements in the sort of gaming and technology fields and things like that. Uh, Cooler Master, for example, have just uh, finally... <sighs> I mean, this has been coming for a while. They're originally slated for release in October, November, December, and now that CES is showing them off again, apparently in their final form, ready to hit the market. But they've got some new keyboards coming out. I don't know, not terribly exciting, but these are low-profile, wireless, mechanical keyboards from a company that I trust to make stuff that doesn't fall apart instantly. And it's Cooler Master, and I'm very excited about the new keyboards. And it's a funny thing to be excited about, but... They look fantastic. Now, I wasn't planning on doing any CES coverage, really, because historically, my coverage, as far as technology goes, is all about getting the stuff in hand and doing a review and talking about, well, this is what it is. This is what it does. Is it good at what it does? Who is it for? Here you go. But I think I might turn the corner on that a bit. I still want to do a lot of that because that's useful. And I made the decision to do that many years ago, and I haven't regretted it much. But there are a lot of channels out there who report on rumors and speculation and announcements and all this kind of stuff, and they do quite well with that. I like to talk about facts, not about could-bes. I find facts more useful for you guys when you're thinking about buying something than, well, they announced this product. It could be kind of good. We'll have to wait and see. Ah, uh, this is what they say it's going to do. I mean, that's never been... What was that? body language today. That's never been sort of where I'm super interested in talking about, but obviously a lot of the audience are because channels that do that tend to do quite well. So maybe I'll pivot to do more of that, such as this video, if I ever get to the point. And the point is the Radian 7, spelt with Roman numerals, because, which is not really consistent with what they called their other higher end, the Radian, I mean, you had the, the Vega, 56 and the Vega 64 and I still use a Vega 56 in my VR rig and it's a sweet little thing indeed so I'm kind of excited about the Radian 7 not a Vega card a Radian card and 7 in Roman numerals not in regular numerals because 7 is less than 64 I suppose they didn't want to make this seem like a lower end card when in fact it is a much more powerful card than the Vega 64. But the exciting thing about this is 
is it's as powerful or more powerful depending on the game and probably slightly less powerful depending on the game but AMD haven't obviously showed off the charts where their new card performs worse than one of the uh, top end cards oh leaf blower now that's fantastic we'll just wait for the leaf blower to go away I thought he already did his thing this morning I got a neighbor gets out the leaf blower every friggin morning small patch of path to clean up uses a leaf blower petrol powered every morning not a broom but a noisy two stroke petrol engined leaf blower one day the police are going to find his body beaten to death with a petrol powered two stroke leaf blower I, i'm not confessing to to planning a, a murder in advance i'm just saying i wouldn't be shocked to find out one day that his his corpse had been violated with a leaf blower Cut to several minutes later and the leaf blower had been turned off, but now it's been stunned up again. Seriously. Corpse. Violated with a leaf blower. No surprise on this face. Okay, he seems to have stopped. Either because someone beat him to death with his own leaf blower, or because... Really. I wish this was a bit I was trying to do. I really do. I wish it was a bit. I wish it was comedy, but... It's not. He keeps turning it off and then turning it on again. If there are any lawyers watching, <laughs> I may need your help soon. Criminal defense attorneys, for example. Tentatively, Blunty pressed record once again having not heard the leaf blower for a good 45 seconds. So we don't really know whether Radiant 7 is an all-encompassing brand name or the name of a specific card uh, because it's called Radiant 7 because it's the first GPU on the planet uh, to be sold commercially with a 7 nanometer process used to make its chip. To those of you who don't know what that even means, basically it means the bits that make up the, 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 the brain are very small which means they can be quite power efficient and, and generate less heat as a, as a waste product. So it should be quite good performance and relatively not power hungry. Although that said, AMD's architecture tends to be a little hungry on the power. To back that up, the reference card they're using has two 8-pin uh, power supply thingies. Sockets is the word I'm looking for. Oh my God, this is the worst video ever. It has a three fan cooler design, so probably uh, needs a fair bit of cooling. But who really cares that much when it is significantly cheaper than a RTX 2080 and performs better than or as good as or close to? It doesn't do NVIDIA's new ray tracing trick, of course, but the practicality and universality of that is up for debate. It's very cool but it's not exactly widely adopted yet and won't be for some time. Probably not until you're ready to upgrade your next graphics card is, is that going to be a thing that a lot of people care about and is in a lot of games that people care about and is sort of practical without, you know, making a, a big chunk in your frame rates. Making a big chunk in your frame rates. Worst metaphor ever. What's interesting is compared to the Vega 64, it has less unified cores, double the memory, much, much faster memory, um, and it's slightly more expensive. The 699 US dollar price tag is the same as the RTX 2080's recommended retail price, but you just try and find an RTX 2080 for 699 US dollars right now. It ain't that easy. A lot of them are up in the 800 something. And of course, all of this sits right next to NVIDIA's own newest announcement, the RTX 2060, which is, again, a very interesting card that's having a very interesting response from the community. It is surprisingly expensive compared to the other 60 series cards, which have been, but there's a fairly strong uh, rumor to be made that is an 1160 coming along, which will be sort of why we expected the 
price tag to be for a 60 series card, but without, of course, the ray tracing stuff, which, as we just talked about, is of dubious usefulness right now. Very, very cool, and I love it, and I want it. But the only game that has it at the moment is not a game I'm interested in playing, for example, so... Eh. And the very strong rumours of a GTX 1160 also make you think about, well, maybe they, maybe NVIDIA's left the door open to do competitive... Uh, price competitive cards, price competitive high-end cards by doing a 1170, 1180, 1180 Ti without the special ray tracing thing. But then would they shoot themselves in their own foot by saying, hey, this ray tracing is awesome. This is the way of the future. And then releasing a bunch of cards without it. I don't especially see that happening. Unless, of course, AMD start grabbing a lot of ground very quickly with these new 7 nanometer cards of which we only know about one so far, but there has to be more coming. Are they going to do a mid-range 7 nanometer card or an even higher end 7 nanometer card to sort of bookend that, that sort of window where most people want to buy the cards? Because the GTX 1060 is just such a sweet spot and is still such a sweet spot, even in the era of the RTX 20 series cards. The GTX 1060 is still a really sweet card for getting that 1080, 60 frames a second, you know, high and, and ultra settings kind of stuff happening, which is where most people want to live. I mean, you've got the enthusiasts out there, the very passionate people out there, the, the people who like to push things further and as high as possible. I've got a 4K screen here and a 1440p screen there, and that one there does 165 hertz and all that kind of, it's very exciting stuff. And it is really nice to game that way. But let's face it, most people who don't occasionally get hardware for free and have to pay out of their own pocket for their hardware uh, target a more reasonable spec. And so cards like the RTX 2060 and still the GTX 1060 and what we're expecting to be the 1160 RTX series card, uh, AMD still needs something that really punches that in the middle of the face. The, the Vega 56 I really like, as I said at the beginning, I use one myself. Um, and you've got the, there, there are other cards which uh, they haven't really updated significantly in a, a few years now. They keep making them slightly faster by overclocking them and refining the manufacturing process and things like that. But it's, it's the same old architecture just being straining against the uh, the anchors upon it. So they haven't been really presenting a, a proper challenge to NVIDIA. So perhaps now, I mean, AMD, what they've done in the CPU space has really woken up Intel and I keep wanting them to do the same thing to NVIDIA because while NVIDIA make very good hardware and I like NVIDIA and I use NVIDIA and two other machines here I've got here right now, uh, their, let's call it arrogance in the marketplace, really needs to be slapped just, just on the side of the face, open farmed, just to... Make them better corporate citizens, I think, perhaps. Because they do slightly take advantage of their relatively unchallenged position. And of course, next year, uh, Intel are going to stomp onto the scene with their own discrete graphics cards, and that'll be interesting too. So you'll have AMD and Intel hopefully making NVIDIA uh, respond to competitive pressures a little more strongly, which I think is the best way to put it. So thank you for watching this idiotic ramble worst video ever if you want to see less of this kind of video let me know if you want to see more of this kind of video let me know if you want to see a more carefully structured and thought out and and presented uh video about new announcements and rumors and things like that also let me know because i really should have made notes and stuff i just i woke up i saw the news about the new card i stepped out of the shower i turned on the camera and started waffling and and, and I, I, i'd be surprised if this video gets a lot of views I'd be surprised if a lot of people stick with this video till the end. If you did stick with the video to the end, the code word is potato. Thanks for watching. I'm Blundy. I'll catch you next time. Seriously though, I need a new chair for this background. It's distracting me. Is it distracting you? It looks so out of place. This big backrest and, and it's the wrong color and everything. I just, I need a lower back chair with like a mesh back, something simpler and something that doesn't distract you. This chair is very comfortable though. DX Racer King series. Very, very comfortable. It does also make that noise.
And it's done that for ever since I've owned it, which I kind of hate about it because I can't move in the thing when I'm recording because it makes that noise. Also, the armrests are a bit wobbly. Very, very comfortable, but not the best chair I've ever seen in my life. Any suggestions for very, very comfortable, affordable office-type chairs for chunkier fellows who sit in them pretty much all day long? That's one thing I do like about this chair. Very, very comfortable to sit in all day long as opposed to the other chair I had, which was also a racing style gaming chair. She couldn't sit in it for more than six hours with my bum going numb. Numb bum. Numb bum. Worst video ever, seriously.